was you don't do something like that on the cuff. You almost have to establish some sort of criteria. Um, it might be longevity. It may be historic nature of a, of a specific event. I mean, Mr. Neal was a, it was a precipice of, of Blackstone finally giving a town that, a council that represented all of Blackstone. Um, I think it would have to be something very careful, and it's delicate, because there may be some folks out there. I mean, I, I know one in particular, I think. Wadsworth. Mr. Hawks was the first African-American ever elected to council, the late Wadsworth Hawks. That's a fact. Right. And he uh, led the ticket, as a matter of fact. Right. Um, but, again, those things that are worth exploring, it, there needs to be some, some criteria. And, um, and there might be some folks that, that, that some might champion and say, that person needs a plaque, and the, and the family may be going, we don't want that. I, I know painfully, painfully I know a situation where <laughs> Someone was assisting on naming something in this town, and the person, five days before they died, said they didn't want that, and it was done anyway. Wow. Painfully. That's all I'll say on that. So I'm all for it, but if, if we want to form a committee, um, maybe even seek uh, nominations from the public and, and make the argument. The family did say, you know, I think that they were under the impression that the town would pay, but they said that they would provide some funds as well. Yeah, right, so. right, right. Um, I think you're probably looking in total, depending on the cost of the plaque, maybe not to exceed $2,000. Right, Prevention. right. How does, I mean, this has come up now, this is the second or third time, does council wish to seek, um, have a memorial committee? I think we should. Council speak through its motions? Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Mr. Miller has moved for the council to establish a memorial uh, committee that would honor, uh, I guess, past and present citizens. Is it confined to town council? Is it uh, Absolutely not. so business community, civic leaders, the whole gamut? Okay. Is there a second to Mr. Uh, Miller's motion? Wouldn't mind. We don't think we should have a memorial. Committee, you're asking for a committee. Right. Well, Mr. The Mr. Neal's memorial is going on. Is, right, is, right, of right. course, the council will have final say on that. Um, I think we may need to let the um, families come to us versus us asking them. Let them come to us with the need and the request. Then we can look at it on a base by base instead of having a committee because we, like you said, we can give out names and then the family will say, no, no, why would you do that? Because I never asked for that. Right. So that's what I think, but we can always discuss it later. But we already you know, got a lot of committees going on. But. <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing. You know, you said come to them, and I agree to you, but if they don't know that they can come to you and find out about this, you know, this is all I'm saying. Right. I oh. think we can broadcast it. We can put it in the newspaper or something like that. But if, the, if you're really interested in for somebody to nominate your family and have a plaque or something, you're going to be vocal about it. If you're really serious because the about it, family came to you. Yeah. They did, and, and luckily, and I'll, I'll be blunt, I'll be blunt. I, mean, listen, I got nothing to lose now. <laughs> <laughs> the the Neil, the Neil family was easy, but let's face it. About five, six months from now, um, Billy, uh, Uncle Jethro coached Miller, at Miller Field for 16 years, and and who's going to say no? Well, what elected official will say? Oh, sorry, I was not good enough. It's it's a little bit of a slippery slope. We we discussed this in committee, and that's yeah. why, to be honest, I would like for now you got prices. I, I don't want to vote on it tonight. I'd like it to go to committee, back to committee, on the, for the bench, for the Neil bench. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. I All think right. there's a lot of discussion is worrying about just an influx of requests, and there was some funding issues that we had discussed. So right. we, exactly. I'd like for it. That's all right. With I agree, because I'm going to come in. And it's like Juneteenth. We said Juneteenth, that we limited, I believe, it was limited to five per year. Um, and like I said, I don't know many elected officials that are going to say, oh, no. Nah. And what will happen is, over time, I, I hope I'm wrong, you'll have a Blackstone Wall of Fame where people will be going, eh, eh, eh. Well, we, oh, thought, we thought it could possibly be um, a place for bricks because it's something smaller. Yeah. But you can memorialize more people and not be such so true, costly. True. So, and and to be honest, I, you had mentioned just council. There's people much more worthy oh. in the citizens than, than we are. Uh, no so doubt. It, I think we definitely need to include everybody if we go. That right. Route. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. But I just said that you know, so we start doing you know, one this you know, then somebody gonna come. Why y'all do this and all that? You know. Yeah. They're gonna do that whether you got a committee. Yeah. 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 
I, I, don't hear, I don't hear a second to Mr. Miller's motion, but I do hear a willingness of this council to be receptive to those that approach us right. and use the measure of history. And, you know, if someone's making an argument to this council or making a plea, they should have the facts to back it up. Right. And just, I think, I think what Ms. Williams says is great. It's case by case, because let me tell you something. Everybody's loved by somebody. Exactly. And there's a lot of folks in this town that may not have been high profile that did a lot of good stuff. Um, so anyway, but good stuff, man. Let's just say this is good stuff. Before we move on real quick, um, Philip talked about <clears throat> Ms. Lyons getting quotes for us, and I don't think she's been introduced to the council before. So. Same problem right there. <laughs> so this is Ms. Carol Lyons. She's our administrative assistant. She works um, at the front desk here on this side. So um, this is Carol, and this is the Council of the Public. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good to see you, Ms. Lyons, again. All right. Um, that takes care of buildings, property, and cemetery. The insurance committee did have an actual bona fide recommendation. That's Mr. Morgan's committee. Mr. Morgan, what is your... Uh, Recommendation. Yeah, we, we met um, going over the uh, renewing options for Versa, and uh, it was determined that we would probably go with the existing plan for the town workers, comp liability, and auto insurance for Versa in the amount of $219,557. I can't talk. $219,557. Um, for that and it was That's cheaper than last the current year recommended by why Phillip. what's the reason for decrease typically insurance always goes up <laughs> claims and then Lonnie you may or Mr. Morgan what's the difference in option one as of two um option one came with a cost of option one was 219,557 option two was 205,382 but the difference was the high deductible the high deductible, high deductible. Okay. High deductible. Gotcha. Okay. That, that's your liability insurance. If some, some get sued, elected official staffs covered for a certain amount. What 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 is what is the elected official covered? What is what is it? Is it a million dollars? I don't know. Right off it's a million. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You should say right there. Got to behave these next six months. <laughs> but look at it fly by. All right. Well, Mr. Morgan, is that a motion to approve? To go with that, to, st to stick with Versa with option one? Is that a motion? Motion. All right, Mr. Morgan has moved. Second. Mr. Nash has seconded. Any discussion? We'll have a roll call vote starting with Ms. Jones. Aye. 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 All right, we are covered. Um, employment and Police Committee, that is Mr. Miller. I see we've been talking about some. Uh, some pay changes again. Yes, if you look in your council packets, this is what is being proposed uh, for the wastewater department. Uh, look at your list here. This is a uh, pay scale for chief operators, and what it is, they want to give 75% 75 75% bonus at 5, 10, 15, and 30 years. And if you go down further, <clears throat> You will see what that equals out to. When would the when would these moves proposed moves take effect? June July first with the budget or immediately? July first with the budget. July first with the budget. So this is just something that you're giving us a preview of what you want to see in the budget. Yes, and, yes. And just for the audience benefits, I know a lot, and I'm one of them. We see a lot of government salaries go up, but I can tell you from talking to the town manager and, and uh, Edward Harris, uh, we're getting poached. Uh, because our water and sewer treatment plant folks are duly licensed, um, Chesterfield is a shorter drive than it used to be. And they're trying to come and pluck our experience once we've trained. And so I, I know a lot of people, Mr. Nash and I have talked privately, it's that race to the top, that how much longer can you keep affording it? But, you know, water, it, that's the most vital service we do. We're one of the few localities that have dual role water treatment operators, they do water treatment and sewer. Right. You go to other localities, you got a water treatment department and a sewer department, so you're paying two separate departments as to where we have dual roles, so I don't think that's too much to add. Excellent, no, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. So explain the, I completely agree with the step increases if, as you get classes, um, but so if someone just happens to, if they get their step one, whatever it be, um, and they can sit like a lump on a log, and have no motive to get better, but they still get an increase. No, no, 
from what I'm saying, it looks like no. after five years, you get a 75 cent increase. But that is only, that's your five year anniversary of obtaining your your, your, your class one of both. Steps. Gotcha. So you, I just want to make sure that we yeah, if you come to the want people one, to improve. The, o, the OIT is where they're trying to have their start and pay start out at sixteen fifty now. And then their steps are going to be one fifty instead of a dollar. But that first chart is, is almost like a retention chart. Gotcha. Once they obtain both licensures, they have an anniversary date to get okay. the 75 cent per license. So that's only after they Correct. test Correct. After they test everything. Right. Correct. Okay. You just class can't walk in off the street there. Class, class four is a higher class. Right. Correct. No. Class four would be the lowest level. Gotcha. This is just informational tonight, obviously. There's no action being taken on this. Sure that it'll come back in front of finance and discussions mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But uh, uh, while we're talking to what we've been doing, and this is electric department as well. Um, I think we addressed some of it with the police department, but uh, we usually give a dollar raise if you, when you get your CDL. We give you a dollar raise when you get this particular licensure and that particular licensure. Um, <coughs> that's been the same since the mid 90s, at least since I've been here. And um, the request would be also to make that one dollar when they do get their license for a particular activity, that it make it one that dollar. It would be my proposal that we would make that put them off. So another dollar fifty an hour instead of one when, when you get the CDL, but, uh, and that would be in the budget as well. So say we have one individual right now that has um, class three right now, whatever it be. Um, in our proposal, it's going to be that they're going to make twenty two dollars an hour. Our current individuals that have class three, what are they making? Are we? My question is, are we going to have to increase everybody that we already have because we're racing to the top on these others? I think if you look at this scale, he shows everybody's seen See, some everybody. sort of an increase. Yeah, everybody. That's what everybody. Is. He says the proposed step that he would have an increase. I mean, each of the operators is there. Um, he does reflect one. And he, he, in his narrative, he reflects a $2 increase. And he's requesting for Jeremy Crane as well. He does maintenance and washing filters. That's a battle you're fighting every month. And it's not just here. That electric nationwide. Line, it's everywhere. And I think Jennifer even mentioned one time before that uh, Versa has stated that local government retaining folks, man, it's just non-negotiable to have water operators. you got to have, have them. I mean, it's just a tough situation right now. Um, but you got to have operators. you got to have cops. you got to have uh, electric lines. Where are we losing folks? We're not losing folks to the private sector, mainly. It's other larger local governments, isn't it? I think the majority of times when people come to me, operators or you know, I've got an opportunity at a, uh, the Abnax River Water Authority. I've got an opportunity at City of Hopewell. I've got right. an opportunity. So I think folks, especially if they've been in the system a while, had that VRS. They're looking at that three-year window, that top three years. We did have one uh, young fellow that left and went to the school system. They were looking for a... Um, he had a water sewer operator that they needed at the school yeah. school board. Yeah. He went to the school system, which is, again, still governmental. But, uh, right. Yeah, that's, it's tough to keep them, man. I'm, I'm telling you. It's, right. Uh, and they're, they're precious because you can't find them. And two of our guys, just so you know, are at or nearing retirement age. And so I think we need to leave some of them beyond your retirement yeah. I mean, tests, I don't want them to go yeah. anywhere. And passing these tests is a booger. Been made harder like a CDO. The CDO <coughs> test used to be a little simpler, but I think the General Assembly has made it much more difficult with class requirements. And so, so um, well, if we're going to be in business. I got to. You got to. You got to be able to put it out there when somebody is, is going to want to apply. That's going to be willing to further. Not somebody's just going to want to apply just to be out there. Right. <laughs> because when the operators we have that are senior leave, we got to have somebody. Yeah, if you want to keep drinking water, you got to have somebody out there. Do we have any sort of um, I know with police, obviously, we do because we pay for training and what whatnot. But when it comes to giving people these extra increases, do we have any sort of contract, contractual agreement? I think they the must contractual stay. Contractual agreement. I think the police department does have. If we pay for somebody to go to to the academy, academy they yeah. have a two year, three, three year, three year, three year. And I think Dan and the electric department have something similar to that. I don't know if it. Yeah, Water treatment doesn't have anything. I don't. I would think it does. I mean, I don't mind putting money out because yes, it's something we need. But I hate to see the influx of people just. I mean, not unreasonable. But uh, the police department, electric, has that. We send them off to school. 
Very briefly, yes, Beverly Ams. Is this something we can take to the Votech for them to start education towards this? I mean, that's what they're out there for is to keep our students coming back and great question. leaving. That's a great question. That would be a great course for them to develop, water sewer treatment. They're very open to developing new programs because I've offered them a couple and they've, they've put them on. Well, I offered the culinary school and those kids have already gone their first year. Right. So, I know they picked the courses for next year. I don't know how quickly they can turn on a dime or not, but I'll, I mean, I'll certainly mention it to Dr. Grimes. And, well, um, I'm, I'm hoping to see Dr. Grimes tomorrow night. Well, if, you've, if, you've got a, got, if you brought culinary arts in Iowa County, see if you can bring uh, water and wastewater treatment. Well, I know that they're working on a construction thing where they're going to be teaching. Building trades. Yeah. Right. That's a natural, that's, that's a good suggestion, uh, Beverly. Very good. Uh, moving right along, uh, the record will note that keeping and retaining quality employees is a struggle here in uh, across the town and for the town. Anything else under employment, please, before we get on with the rest of our agenda? That was it. That was it? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you do have two items on your consent agenda. We have a back-to-school bucket truck showcase that Ms. Marsha Martin is requesting on August 15th. Um, I think it's to build excitement for back-to-school, to build a relationship between the community and the school system. It's Monday, August 15th from 4 to 7. Um, they want to have the town bucket trucks on display. Sounds good to me. What does council say? Any objection? Mo is there be a motion to approve? Do you want to Let's do one at a time. So moved. So moved. Motion been made by Mr. Nash, seconded by Mr. Uh, Morgan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries 6-0. The second consent agenda item is we have a request from Mr. Melvin Hicks. He would like to, on graduation day, which is Saturday, May 28th, like to have uh, School Street closed beside his house for his daughter's graduation event uh, party, I would imagine, from 4 to 8 o'clock. Said there will be music. He liked the noise ordinance wave during that time. He will let the neighbors know about the event in advance. So moved. Second. Ms. Jones has moved to approve. Mr. Morgan to second. Any questions, concerns? Mr. Hicks will put out the cones himself. <laughs> Mr. Hicks is no quite extra, familiar with, no the, with the way that I think if anybody can do it, Mr. Hicks can do it. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, moving right along with the unfinished business, we have several items and we don't need to beat them all to, like a dead horse, but Cox Road is one we probably do. This is as much Cox Road Waterline. Cox Road Waterline, this is as much information as anything. Uh, I believe in one of our last council meetings, uh, you guys advised it uh, and I recommended that we contact the county and tell them at this time because we have not heard from them and the grant window for health department infrastructure funding has passed that we notify the county and the cost of the project has gone up appreciably uh, from 2019 when we made the original request to 2022 and we did notify them um, of that there is <coughs> mr vaughn i think at one of the council meetings had made mention that there was a grant out there and it was sitting on my desk well, th that was the one that we already submitted, right. <laughs> and um, and he said that Todd Fortune says there's there's a lot of water grant money, there is, but that's what we submitted. So and that was due earlier. So we have put in, it's in the it, what we submitted for was Taylor Bottom aeration system and for the uh, replacement of the raw water line. Whether we do them all or not, to be determined. Um, we still got to find out if we get approved. Uh, one quick question there. This is something that I don't mind telling you. A former councilman who's 94 years old saw him the other day and said, Son, got a question for you. His name is Doug Colbert. <laughs> if you run the water line, how does the town legally, or how does even the county legally make somebody connect to a line? If we, if we let's say we, we had the money, we, we built the line to Mar, how can the town of Blackstone go outside and make someone connect? And how can the county of Nottaway make them connect it? The only yeah. way is, it, is make them be in town. We actually went through it in Amelia when we built a water system. And what was done is there was a boundary for a sanitary district uh. that was created. And within that boundary, based on planning and long term, but really we just used the sewer system boundary. Okay. Uh, what the county did, we actually went to the General Assembly and received authorization to mandate connections. So there so is a legal authority that you it can... It was done previously, and if you know, the General okay. Assembly will create population brackets or Very good. this particular community. But the town cannot do anything in the county without the county taking the steps to mandate the connection. So you were asking this council tonight to do what? Nothing. That's just information. I think okay. we're done with that one until further notice. All right. It's a shame. Let the record show the town of Blackstone for three years has tried. And I will say this with all due respect to our friends of the county, not 
there have been papers left on people's desk, but the one I remember most was a, a letter written in July 2019 asking for the county's blessing that I don't believe we got a reply for about two years. I believe that's correct. I don't think we've received a formal reply yet. So I just want to clarify that. Moving right along to Bay Evans Lane, the property sale. Awaiting appraisal. I left a message for LJ Dornack. Uh, we had two applications or two submittals uh, interested in the property. Um, and this has been openly discussed previously, so I can tell you S. Walker Construction uh, is still keenly interested. Uh, I have not heard much from the gentleman who is proposing some solar panels or solar project there. I have not heard anything new, any uh, updates from him. So uh, we await the appraisal. Hopefully we'll get it. I know the field work has been done. Jason told me that the fellow had been out there. So um, he's been there, and hopefully something soon. And I uh, sent him an email today in hopes I would get a response today, but I have not heard back from him. On well, number three on the Board of Zone Appeals, if it, unless council uh, – has someone in mind, I would like to bring a name forward. I want to verify somebody and bring that name forward for nomination at the next council meeting. I have a potential name. And Mr. Lashway, we do appreciate you considering, but we understand you. <laughs> I know you've got a lot going on and you're busy right now. We appreciate you being uh, considered anyway. Uh, unfinished business number four, ditches. Ditches. Good old ditches. I think we had some discussion, and I think Sheila had brought to our attention a pretty tough-looking ditch that's over there on Northwest Avenue. We've received some comments and comp complaints from Mr. Somerville and Mr. Evans who are there. Um, I think the direction I received was to get a cost estimate to enter the property and take care of it, and I think this would do from basically the railroad track to Northwest Avenue and then from Northwest Avenue beyond Mr. Uh, Evans's house. And the cost estimate was $87,650, including engineering and contingencies. Um, I think last time we talked about this, you wanted me to uh, speak with South Hill Farmville and see what their policies are. Um, I think they're like us. The policy is don't do it. But in a particular instance, they both indicated that they have gone on private property and done stuff when requested. So um, I do, I think uh, Jennifer Daniel also got uh, uh, Versa to give us a commentary that, and I don't think they were overwhelmingly uh, in support of going on private property. And that's attached for your information as well. Um, mm, mm, mm. But it's not out of the question or out of the realm of uh, normalcy to uh, do some of these kinds of things. Ms. Ms. Oh, we have a question. Is that, is that Mr. Daryl Miller? No. I'm sorry. I, don't, I'm, I, I should, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't have my Sorry. Me and my glasses. Yes, sir. You're saying it's private property. It comes through there. It's stagnant water all the time. Um, I, I had to remove 12 Margarsons last year out of my yard. I got an eight-year-old daughter that can't play in the yard because either rats, snakes, mosquitoes, and even though it might be private property, I think the town is, is, is liable for it because the water is draining off the town through some of the property. There's no neighbor built, no ditch come through there. I've been living there all my life. Right. It's nobody, nobody dug that ditch, but the town, the town used to clean it years ago. Just come through and clean it. So it shouldn't be right that a bill be footed to the people, the property owners. Because that water comes through there from the town and goes under the, under the main road and goes through Mr. Evans' yard and wash this land all the way down. His house is about, about the way to in. Well, I remember there was some work done at uh, Michael May down on Sullivan Street years ago, and he, he, his driveway was going to he was going to okay. go into the creek, go into the ditch. Yeah, because um, my property is now washing down into the ditch. It's not my property because I got I got a survey through there. It's not mine. Town used to clean it years ago. They got snakes, rats. I had rats in my house. I got my house like in 2014. Last year I had rats all through my house, eating holes. And I had to get rid of that. Then it goes out there last year. My weed eating in the ditch. A Marguson struck me three times in the leg, but I had baggy pants on. So I can't let my eight-year-old daughter play in that, in that yard like that. And that's not my responsibility. And I put stuff down, spraying for mosquitoes and all. How long? Uh, how long? I'm looking at the quotes here. How how long is the area in question that would be repaired? In total, from Lin linear feet. Right away. Yeah. To beyond Mr. Uh, Evans' house, 225 linear 
seats. Wow, on this football and that field. Wouldn't include the boxes, which are so I'm, I'm looking at the aerial of it. Where exactly does the water come from? I mean, uh, the water that's above Northwest Avenue begins. There may be a culvert under the railroad that actually brings some of it from over near Walter Mack. Yeah, it comes from that way. And uh, it goes under the railroad. I have to go out there and push the weeds aside to see if that was the case. But it does take the water from the railroad area to Northwest Avenue. That's the portion next to Aaron's house. And then goes the up the on the street. street. And then mm -hmm. uh, I think it'd be 125 feet in Mr. Evans' side, about 100 on well, Mr. Somerville has been very patient. He's taught, he's contacted me numerous times through the years um, and been very pleasant about it when you contacted me, and I appreciate that. Um, these are big ticket items. There's two di these two ditches that have been staring us in the face now for, for years. And Mr. Arms. Uh, that's the other one. That, that's, I said two. And that, that estimate for Dillard Street, 51000 that's not for the whole ditch. That's only 100 feet, I think. I think if you look at that estimate, that wouldn't satisfy. <coughs> First one that he's got on the Dillard Street. I think if you look at it under uh, drainage, it says storm sewer 30 inch reinforced concrete pipe at 100 feet. Right. So that would add 100 feet. But ARPA money, I know we've got a big part of it earmarked. Would there be any ARPA money potentially? Or would VDOT funds be used, qualify? Yeah, private property, VDOT's not going to qualify. VDOT's not going to qualify. Well, you know, private property, he says it's not his property. Whose property is it? It's Mr. Somerville's and or the no, it's not mine. Okay. Guy. I got I got a survey it's stick. In, but but your it's, it's, it's your neighbor's property, door. but you're bearing the impact of it. Yeah, I don't know if it even hurts. I mean, I'm not sure, right. but like I said, the town used to clean it years ago, and it's, the water used to, you know flow freely through there. Now it's stagnant. My house smells from that odor, of stench odor that bees in the house, and I don't know what else to do. My mom tried to get it away before she died. And they kept kicking the, kicking the can down the road. Is there any way we can, Nobody did nothing. Until we can get something done? Is there anything, I think, Mr. Morgan, until we decide whether or not to proceed with the big ticket fix, is there anything that the town crews can do that would buy us some time and, and, and also give him some benefit, not just go out there and be a photo op, but just. There and, and it's really, really narrow, and be, it's going to be difficult to get a piece of equipment in there because it's, it's real tight. But, uh, on Mr. Evans' side, I don't think there's anything you can do as long as it's... Too dangerous? Water. Yeah, yeah, you ain't going to be able to do anything. I mean, it, it needs I mean, you can throw stone in there, but if you decide to, you know, find chunks of concrete or whatever and put it there, I'm not sure that that's going to... Well, let me ask you this. What, what if this council right now said tonight it was going to take on both projects and say, you know what, we're tired of talking about it, we're going to do it. What could you as town manager do as far as funding it? Scram around, sit down tomorrow morning and try to figure out how exactly to do it. We've got some uh, commitments that we need to finish up this fiscal year. Right. Um, as we're doing the budget, we can look at trying to include it. If we can find some additional funds in the budget that we can do it. We're not quite balanced yet. I'm still uh, some distance apart. But uh, to do that one, figure you better get Mr. Vet in well, on the vocals too. Let's see what we can look at because, I mean, if this man is starting to have structural damage. Yeah. And yeah, his, not, his house I, I is think, bad. I yeah, think it, it's washing do down. It, 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 it wasn't it's like that years ago. I think I talked about it, what, three years ago when I first came here? Yeah. Yeah. I think what we're going to need to do is probably have a, I think what this council is going to have to do, we talked about having a more memorial committee earlier or whatever, and that's fine, dandy. I think the council needs to have a list of the, the most pressing ditches that need repair, mm -hmm. and it'd be like one every year or two. And I think for everything I've heard, mm -hmm. this would probably be number one. Yeah. If you're looking at pressing, no offense to Mr. Somerville, because I know it's not pleasant living next to that ditch, Mr. Evans is probably the most pressing portion of this. Mr. Arms has stepped behind his house. Right. I think his house is threatened. Right. Uh, I don't He's in the woods. Mr. Somerville, but I think Mr. Evans' house is bad. Right but I would say if you're going to go and do his, you might as well do the whole thing right. at the same time. And could that reduce the price and tell the contractor, say, look, you can do this thing in two pieces, but or we're looking for a little. The price is already there to do yeah. both sides. Pardon? Yeah. The price is already there to do both sides. Yeah, 89000 87 includes from the railroad to northwest right. and then beyond this. 125 feet from northwest Avenue. But that's just, do they get, the BM, that's B&B &B doing it, sole source. Oh, well, it's not sole source. That's your engineer. That's yeah. engineer. Okay, engineer okay, okay. Uh, but we would have to bid out the work. Right. We'd have to acquire an easement to enter. And I think the easement should be permanent. When we put it in, we want to be able to maintain that stuff. Right. And, uh, so we would have to get the property owner to do the Title Search to make sure the property owner signed off appropriately. And, uh, 
But if, if we do something with the ditch to, to temporarily, I mean, will it help with drainage? I can send the guys over there. We can yeah, it's, it stinks. Yeah. The yeah. water sits there, there in the spot. Yeah. 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 spots all along there. And it stinks. How about man with rake? Like, big, can we, is something we can do to just manpower? Is there anything we can just go down there with weed eaters and try to cut it all back and see what we can do? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I'm still not sold on it. I feel like we can help um, the one that's affecting the house. But when it comes to snakes, we can't stop. I mean, I'm not. The, snakes, the snakes is running. He's saying it's coming, he is coming from, he said it's not on his property, and he's got snakes and rats. Yeah. So he Correct. can't live but like how that. How do we take the responsibility as the town? When I'm sitting here looking at the map, it's yeah. Miss Merle next door. Yeah, but you need to close Earl that Lehman, ditch because they, they're in that ditch and they're coming out of that ditch chasing frogs and rats. On the lower end. Coming by my property. And I don't want my daughter to be bit by no snake. No, no I agree. And, I and right smelling my, it's smelling in my house. I just put that house there in 2014. Mr. 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 Evans, yes, sir. And when I say it's more like a landfill. Up underneath the ground, you see burrows, you see uh, bathtubs, you see all kinds of on the bank. Mm. Everybody rain, just get more and more. You can see. I mean, burrows, bathtubs. I mean, I mean, it's amazing. I need to take care of it. Well, we did it the I first time. I need to see it with my own eyes. You show me pictures, but I need to see it with my eyes. Yeah, because it's, it's What does Council want to do? We're going to get ball. I'm not trying to, yeah. not trying to overlook y'all, obviously, but what, can, what does Council want to do tonight? Ms. <clears throat> Williams just uh, suggested an immediate course of action to to put all hands on deck and try to clear the water. And, and I think we can go to Mr. Somerville's side, maybe with a mini excavator and go around behind his house and see if we can get the puddle cleaned clean right. out. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do, if I can get equipment in there right. to do it, doing it by hand, <coughs> I don't even know if that would take a lot of sense other than just it's gonna be a lot. That's going to be a lot. That's going to be a lot. Seeing what you got and mm -hmm. trying to do the best we can. But uh, uh, Mr. Evans, is, yeah, I don't I think there's much we can do with it short of doing it because any effort that you put in there putting stone or any of those kinds of things you're going to have to take equipment in there and lay that stone and I think it has the potential to come right back out. Right. But I can on Mr. Somerville's side now um, for Mr. Arms' property that ditch is just as slick at the bottom now and it's smooth there's some trees that are growing up here and there um, that's just a big that's just big wide big chasm man. That's, a, that's deep it's in places almost as deep as this one. Yep. So just um, you talked about last month. We talked about ARPA funds, and somebody asked about that. I, I just wondered if that was something. I know you know we could, we could spend ARPA funds tonight real quick, <laughs> make everybody happy. But you had but, last month. Y'all voted to do interim financing until you see if you get this grant. So then, would that money be available if you get the grant money? I think the intention was to use that money ultimately to replace all the meters because water and sewer is a specific right. approved activity. Um, I think also that uh, you know we've got an armory project that'll be bid out, we suspect, in the next six months, and I'm not sure the $2 million is going to make it. No, I know. Uh, not unless we have, not unless interest rates keep going up and contractors get slow. And it could happen. So putting it bluntly, I don't think ARPA is going to be a put over my head. Huh. ARPA's not what? It's not going to be used for private drainage, money. drainage, especially drainage on pri drainage on public property. Yes, but private property, the feds would probably say no. But meanwhile, we're getting ready to get into summer. Your situation. It's not going to get any better unless we have a severe drought, which no one wants. Um, every time it rains, washing my property down further right. and further and further. Right. And the water is sitting there, and like I said, it's frogs, snakes. Right. And I'm pretty sure you ain't going to live beside yourself. Nah. Nah, I wouldn't want to. That smell, that smell coming up in your house. So yeah. what does council wish to do tonight besides, I mean, what what is viable? What's practical? And Mr. Nash is right. Any, and, and not trying to. Yeah. Any vote this council takes about a private ditch, it is a domino 
they'll start falling. I, I, I know of at least four different families that will be here about their ditches, and they have a, nothing to severe as yours, but they have legitimate issues for drainage. Um, what, what does council want to do tonight? Because this is one of those frustrating times where you need relief. Y'all both need relief. Um, but what, can, what does council wish to do? We'll go ahead on with this project. It ain't no need to keep on prolonging it. I mean, the prolonging is going to get worse. Council, speak through its motions. I think we need to move forward because Mr. Evans is not going to have a home soon exactly. right. if the waters keep running down. And Mr. Somerville's kids is not safe out there, so I, I think I'll we should just... I make a motion to move forward. Now, is it just with this one or the one on Villers Street, too? Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about this situation right here. Right? 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 Yeah. Let's be clear. Right. On Dillard Street is not included in your no. motion. Is that right? I, I, just, I, was, I was talking about these two for right. the right. last night. $87,000 is going to be a challenge to find now without having to dig into the cash reserve. Um, because we do have other things that we're trying to finish funding, like the work at the airport that we've got to pay for this year. So if you can do one, and then maybe consider the next one. Now, this is the Northwest Avenue ditch. Northwest Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to throw out one last ditch effort, not to deter the project itself, but just like we had discussed in, in the committee with um, Buildings, Property, and Cemetery about having some kind of leverage of people helping the field. I mean, it's, we're going on private property. Is there any way that we can come to some sort of agreement that, I mean, just looking at the map, it's from the railroad, which isn't us. It's all on private property. I feel like something needs to be borne by the property owner. I agree that they're big issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, but who did it, somewhere along the line? The, the town, the no town cut right. that ditch. It's no road right it there. It don't matter. The town. the town cut that ditch through there because that property, that ditch didn't grow by itself, and it comes from the town. It water washing from the town through that underneath the railroad track and coming through there. So I don't, I'm pretty sure a property I owner didn't like didn't this, dig that ditch. Been to my road, and I, I've got a. Everything comes down from the mayor's house, runs straight into my property, so I had to dig a ditch. Don't forget Mr. Morgan's yeah. house. Yeah, it comes from <laughs> Lon's house. Thanks, Lonnie. <laughs> I'll go with council, but I just, I just know what's to come. It's not eighty-seven thousand dollars. You're looking at half a million dollars of ditches that will come up. But, but this is a. Pr I will say this though, and we know there's going to oh, be this static. Much when you talk, I mean, and that, yeah, this is, we're talking about someone's house. We're talking about, like I said, and you can't, and this council can't control snakes. There's snakes no, all over town. No, you can't control that. But, but when it's a situation that we know, I, I remember Michael May, right before council took action. That was about 20 years ago. I went down there on a Sunday morning and watched and looked at us, and I'm, I'm like, those are all snakes. <laughs> they're just like, it's like they heard me. All of a sudden, little heads popping out of rocks. Like, oh, what's going on? I said, man, I couldn't sleep at night with that beside me. Mm -hmm. Um so, Ms. Ms. Jones has made a motion to proceed with the Northwest I Avenue ditch. To you, Mr. May paid eight hundred dollars towards the roof rack. Sure. He and did. I remember that. He paid eight hundred dollars. The town went on that because we had a sewer line that ran. And we had a sewer line right. and, and right. property. He, I don't know if he fully paid for the roof rack. He, he did contribute. He did participate. But Ms. Jones has a motion on the floor. Is there a second to Ms. Jones's motion to proceed with the Northwest Avenue ditch at the estimated cost of eighty-seven thousand so dollars? I second it. All right, Ms. Williams is second that motion. Discussion. i also like to add that while we're going to look into getting the funds for that, Temple World, we need to go in there and clean that ditch out and get that water from sitting there because it's going to get worse before it gets better. I don't think – I think that's a mute point. We've got the money somewhere. We'll have to take it from something right. else. Why waste the time? And doing that, right. just going to do it. Yeah, if, one time. if we're going to do it, like, we're going to do it like tomorrow, next week, yeah, yeah. but we know it's not going to happen that fast. You've got to be realistic. Months. You said several yeah. months, what, maybe a couple months? That's what I'm saying, clean yeah. the ditch out. Okay. The, and get the what's going to slow it down is getting the easement. If Mr. Somerville was giving us an easement, I think it would be simple, but if we got to go to the adjacent property the owners. The ditch is entirely on the, by looking at the tax maps, it's entirely on the adjacent property owners. We're going to have to, that will be the slowest part of getting the easement. Sign. Now, Mr. Evans, obviously, do we know her? Does she, or does he or she? Are they? Neil has passed away, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I don't know who. But that only goes 50, or who. That only goes 50 foot back. Then you've got a Samuel Fitzgerald, and the next lot is a Cosby Doswell, and then the next lot that you're going to have to be on That's is gonna be your Charles King. Getting right. your right, designing it and all that sort of thing is mm -hmm. not the end of the world. But actually getting easement from the correct family right. members, it may require some combination. Yeah. Tessie's going to send out notices and all that, and it's going to be a, probably a court order. Kiri, come one, come all. And but that's 
the, I think there's a process whereby you can adopt whatever resolution or ordinance in order to condemn it and then set money aside in escrow while the matter is being resolved. But uh, that's going to be your soapbox. It ain't going to be the dig it. It ain't going to be the form concrete. It's going to be getting everybody who's supposed to sign an easement to sign an easement, especially coffee dog well. And those are some older names. Well, if, this, if this motion passes, it will set the wheels in motion. The motion has been made. It's been duly seconded. Do, we, do you want to include the cleanup mm -hmm. since, it, since it is going to take so long? We'll do what we can. Okay. We will have a, because it exceeds $10,000, we will have a roll call vote starting with Ms. Jones. Aye. 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 No. Aye. Motion carries 5-1. And uh, we thank you all. and We thank you, Mr. Somerville. <laughs> Apologize for not wearing my pants earlier. I asked Eric earlier, I said, we got recreation tonight? What's going on? Um, moving right along, we have Lee Chase. That's another fun topic. <laughs> this is really exciting tonight. <laughs> but we, important stuff, important we, stuff. We would like council to, um, and I don't think it needs to be in an ordinance form tonight, but Tessie does have an ordinance that she would like adopted stating that the town, not only for the county, but also can accept septage from third-party haulers and uh, the purpose for tonight is to have authorization to advertise for an ordinance because Tessie does have it as an ordinance format I know council wanted to begin the process of codifying the uh, agreements that the town may have with the county on things like leachate and sludge hauling and all that um, so I think there's an agreement also included that can be modified for each individual septage hauler um, but the current rate that we charge for septage haul, septage is different than leachate. Septage is from a septic tank, okay? And that's 15 cents a gallon, okay? And that's what we've been charging. However, for leachate rates, and I think the committee had discussed this with the county in order to codify it, right now we've been charging about eight-tenths of a cent per gallon on half of the volume. So, for example, if they bring a million gallons, we only charge them for 500,000 gallons. And the committee has met with the county. Mr. Costin and Lynn Shackleton and others have been here. And what has been verbally discussed and agreed upon is one cent. So it's really not a huge rate increase, but simply charging for every gallon delivered is going to be doubling well, just makes revenue. Sense. Just makes um, sense. For our budget purposes, I'd like a motion from council to codify that and use this agreement, but I'd also like the authorization to go ahead and advertise an ordinance uh, for public hearing at the June council meeting. Are there entertain a motion to that effect? So moved. Mr. Morgan has moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Miller has second. Any discussion? Was there, can I ask a question? Yes. Was it 15 cents per gallon for septic or 0.15 cents per 15. gallon? 15 cents per gallon for septage. So $450 per 3,000 gallons. It, but remember, the town of Blackstone residents oh, yeah, I know are on that. sewer. Yeah. So this is predominantly people that are not residents. There may be a yeah. few people here in town that still have septic tanks, and I can tell you of a few, but predominantly this is out of town. This could be from Lindenburg or Cambridge. Or, and we have the right to reject anyone that we don't. And I think that's part of the that's, agreement. That's exactly right. Just hoping it doesn't set a precedent for town members. Uh, uh, motion to be made and second. Any further discussion? To, to proceed with advertising and proposal, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. And this is only agreeable if the county reduces their rate, correct? Or keeps their rate lower. Right. Right now they charge $3 <coughs> per head, and I think they're going to stay there. Okay. And I forgot to mention also that they are waiving our sludge disposal charges as part of this agreement. Okay, that's good. So it's one penny, some, uh, some give and take, some, some volume, and that's they're right. waiving the sludge. Um, they are committing themselves, and I, what I've seen, I can provide you the legal opinion from Sam's Anderson that need that they need to stay at three bucks. But here's where they are going to go up on things like tires, construction debris if you tear down a house here in town. And we'll just have to make some decisions whether we can afford to continue to carry it there or if there's a less expensive alternative. But that's the vast minority, vast minority of the tonnage that we carry. Okay. But they're proposing to stay at three bucks. All right, very good. Moving on to Taylor Bottom. This is a report on a possible Taylor Bottom block grant. As you know, we submitted a grant application uh, for the Department of Health for the replacement of water lines in the Taylor Bottom neighborhood. Um, and I've talked to Sheila on more than one occasion about this, but I want to make sure everybody understands that the intention or the, the purpose 
of applying for specifically to tailored bottom is twofold. Twofold. One is there's money available. Okay, there's a, an abundance of money. Plus, we can also, we believe, prove that there's presence of lead because of the age of the, and type of the piping. And we don't have a lead problem that's showing up in water samples, but I can tell you there are lead goosenecks, which are the services, and there are lead solder because it's a cast iron line. Okay, um, I can't say it's Flint, Michigan, because it's not. We don't have anything to, to say that, but I do think it creates um, a nice narrative and a grant application, not only for water lines, but a nice narrative if the town so chooses to pursue a block grant project down there, just like we're doing on East End with water, sewer, uh, wildly expensive because it's a big neighborhood and obviously would be, have to be chopped up into manageable sized pieces, but uh, um, I want to make sure we're heading in the right direction, that council's okay with it, uh, because we believe we could get as much as a million dollar grant or a million and a half dollar grant on the water portion of it. But not only to alleviate the potential for any health issues, but we also think this is the start of a block grant project, okay? This, if awarded, would be our match, okay? That we wouldn't have to come up with any additional How about match. curb, gutter, lighting? Would that be part of the in-kind, maybe? Yeah, I'm sure the lighting, the people, you That's know, in any kind of surveys. Bumps. Speed bumps. <laughs> but I can tell you, curb and gutter, Yes, everybody likes it. Nobody turns it down if it doesn't cost anything. And the only time I ever get turned down for curb and gutter is when you got to pay half of it yep. and put a lien on my property. I got one. In the, so, in the bills, you have a, a $7,770 bill for Taylor Bottom Improvements and that was reimbursable. Is that part of? Taylor Bottom Improvements was writing the PER. This is the engineering report we're going to do. I, I believe that's what it is. But uh, we've committed ARPA monies to do a PER for the neighborhood. Okay, and that's specific to the water and the sewer side. So if the health department doesn't come through, we have met Department of Health and we have met uh, um, USDA standards for, for conducting a PER, preliminary engineering report. All this, all that's the only stuff. activity we've got going on. This is good stuff, though. This is very good. It'll be a natural progression. East End will wrap up and then move on to, that's what we've been doing for the last 20 years and it's needed. Mm -hmm. you, you, you quit moving, you, you get stagnant. Mm -hmm. um, Moving right along to unfinished business number seven. Oh. So as a consensus, we're moving in the right direction. Everybody cool with it? Yeah, good. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's going to be an expensive project. I mean, it has all the makings of a multi-million dollar deal. But if you look at East End, and I'm passionate about this, if you look at East End, look what's come to East End. That's right. In part because the streets look better. Yep. Because of that one block. ratty houses. Yeah, well, it's coming. Oh, but yeah. those yeah. old ratty houses that were down there that had slats on the windows and that blue house where the front porch had fallen off. I don't think those 12 units would have been built on Dillard Street. That's right. And I don't think five, six million dollars would be spent on ongoing right now at Patriot Square. So I think these kinds of things can spur private investment. That's That's been a I got a question. We're not going to do any uh, paving over there, right? Because these people are on Broad Street. Well, here's the here's here's the. Problem. I, I understand the problem. So, are we going to get to that before the winter, or what? Um, we may have to tar and gravel it for the winter. Right. I don't yeah. think you'll have your final asphalt. Here's the progression. We've got water and sewer contractors are literally done over there. They've got to put a meter in at uh, Levi's, and clean up, and that's really the, the remaining, including digging out those trenches and putting asphalt back in them. Right. Okay. It's still going to be rough. It's still not going to be perfect but getting the base asphalt, four and a half inches of base asphalt in all those trenches. The next thing that we've got to do is we have a bid out right now. We're soliciting bids for water line, about 400 feet of water line. that was not in the project, but Andre's asked if we could loop it, and it runs basically from Dorn Landscaping south on Harris Street to the terminus of where the existing water line was, approximately in front of Tom Taylor's house. All right. That's out to bid right now. We had an estimate of about $36,000. We hope that holds true. We've got the cash, so I don't have to raid any other fund or do anything else. Um, once that's finished, we hope to have all the curb and gutter put out to bid. And the houses now, we got five out on contract, right? They're not on contract. They're out to bid. Right. The bids were received on the 11th, and Earl will make the uh, recommendations for the housing rehab board uh, very soon. But it's five yeah, units five. that are... Right. Uh -huh. <coughs> uh, and then the last unit that we had, we received the paperwork, Chassis received the paperwork, and we had a commitment of 11, and that'll be 11 units. Oh, right. So we've met our obligation there. 
and then the paving would be last. Right. Okay. So we'd look at the pavers for the spring. Probably pave it in the spring. We may have to hit it with tar and gravel or something like that just to get us through. And um, but we need to get that curb and gutter put in before we do right. really anything right. else. And we want to make sure, obviously, you know, as we get going in and start tiptoeing down the tail bottom, we want to make sure we wrap up. Right. And I'm sure you will. We'll leave it, yeah. Absolutely. Still plenty to go. Moving on to unfinished business number seven. This is a topic that Mr. Miller was passionate about uh, about uh, several months ago, and we there was somewhat of a stalemate at council, and he wanted to, he proposed, and I know he probably still believes in this, to to take the reconnection fee that's currently twelve fifty, double that to $25, but all monies from reconnection would be put into weatherization. And the reason we delayed it was at the time we were discussing it, bills were high, um, I think there were probably some some reconnections going on. Um, some Thank folks you. said some folks some the argument that was made. I think Mr. Johnson was quite passionate that the, the folks that tend to be behind are going to be paying more. You you said we'll never do anything weatherization wise if we keep you know not having any money to do it. So it's back on council's table for discussion. The purpose that I support the reason I supported us tabling it was because of the. Um, outcry from the, the one or two audience members that night. Right. It was very passionate, but it's been several months ago. Well, we got one or two choices. We can either go with this or we can come to the budget committee and ask for some money for weatherization. Yeah, you definitely have that choice. Right. We, we got, got that choice. But you got to get you got to get four votes to approve that. <laughs> yeah, you got to get four <laughs> votes, but uh, if we, if we, wanna, if we don't want to deal with this, then we just go to the finance committee. Right. Simple. I don't think that we don't want to deal with it. It's just giving the, the people another extra cost and people already, you know, scrambling it to make ends meet. That's the only reason you're worried. Yeah, yeah, that's the only concern. Ms. Hearns, okay, you got, okay, you say it's right here, 5% is applied February the 1st, 12.50 February the 5th. So if you don't pay your light bill anyway by the 16th, you're going to pay $25 anyway, am I right? Right. right. That's the point I was trying to get y'all to see. Regardless, you're going to pay the $25. But if you double the twelve fifty to $25, you no, take the, See, I think that's where that got misinterpreted. Okay. Only thing I was saying was this twelve fifty after on February the 16th, I was saying take that money and put it toward weatherization. That's what I was saying. Okay. Didn't it used to be $25? It, yes, it was, it was $25, and then in, in early 2017, there was a packed house here fussing about light bills and said that $25 is a tax on the poor, is what it was said. You're taxing those most vulnerable in your community, you know, socking it to them. And the, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's several households that it was almost kind of a monthly way of life that they, they had to, they scrounge up, they paid late, and they had to pay that $25 fee. How, how many? But, but I'm saying is this. Regardless, if you don't pay a certain amount, you're going to pay that money anyway. How so we're not taking anything no, from I, you. I, I, I think the mayor had it right that if you doubled the reconnect fee, that's what you, that's the what disconnect, the it, it would be thirty seven fifty instead no, of $25. No, 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 no. That's, no. that's, no. that's, that's the way it was presented that's to everybody. Presented. Right. Yeah. And everybody received it that way because after that meeting, a lot of um, my ward came to me and after they saw the article in the paper, it was heated. It was a heated argument. Um, conversation about that. How much on the books do we currently have? Of but you see, it's not twenty five. Oh, hold on, hold on, let's delinquent some. electric bills. I think there's a report in the back of your packet. Yeah. So if you, I mean, are like on the cost. Well, no, not on call cost. I'm not worried about that. But so I think For what you're talking about on the on the twelve fifty on the fourth, I view that as our insurance policy mm -hmm. to help cover the cost of those that will never pay. So I would be completely against taking that money that would be on the 4th because, I mean, it was presented as it would come on the 15th. That's what was presented, that that 1250 would be the double. No. Probably like 60% of our customers paid on the 15th, I would say. Really, that many? You'd say that 100%? Really? But, be, but beyond that, how much, I mean, how much do we actually get stuck with eventually? Is what, I mean, eventually we get... Stuck with a fair like amount. And and my point is is that first twelve fifty late fee helps offset those that do pay on time from us having to increase electric bills. 
So I'd be 100%. We've always done that the 1250 or the $25 goes towards weatherization. But I would be completely against using the first 1250 towards weatherization. <laughs> Okay, kind of, so if you, you have more you, first twelve fifties, then you do second twelve fifties, right? I would think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so on the fifth, you probably have. I, mean, I can run you a report on how much I received on, on the sixteenth. I can run a report on just for one month on how much we receive and reconnect to for one month. But you probably month. receive more twelve fifties on the fourth. I mean, on the on fifth mm -hmm. than you do on the yes. See, on the sixteenth. And avoid getting on that cutoff and list. On that and the only reason this came up, the system right now is there's really nothing wrong. People are used to what Mr. Miller is trying to do is trying to find a way to beef up weatherization. Maybe it would be cleaner and easier to do it through the budget process. I have no problem with maybe, that. Maybe that would be easier to go ahead and do it that way. I think so. This is a little confusing, and, and, yeah. and we change it on people. Yeah. And let me tell you, everything's nice now because the trees are blooming. But wait till we get next January and everybody's in here saying, I didn't know y'all double. When y'all double that? Y'all were crazy. I have no problem yeah. going to the budget. I, I, think, no I think let's look at the budget. I think budget is yeah. a more global picture. So with council's common consent, can we move on to financial services? As part, and this is contingent <laughs> only if awarded by the Department of Health. Uh, but I am going to need some assistance, I think, with a rate study. Um, this is a big lending if it happens. Um, and I'm asking authorization to seek financial consulting services to assist with the health Department of Health grant loan requests that were previously submitted in April. Services would only be required in the event the application are approved. And the biggest part of it is twofold. First of which is we need to have somebody engage the Virginia Resources Authority who would be the ultimate um, agency that we deal with and make our payments to to make sure that our general obligation debt load does not exceed <coughs> statutory limits. We have, when we weren't doing so well and when we had some of these private placements over the past few years and refinancing with private firms, they've required and requested general obligation coverage. And when I say general obligation, usually on a water bond, when you borrow money, they say, we want the revenue. You got to guarantee us you're going to raise the rates necessary right. to pay this off. There's also a moral obligation, which means the town is morally obligated. I don't know if anybody's ever won in court on a moral obligation. But the third way to make a guarantee is general obligation, meaning whether you've got to raise taxes, sell equipment, whatever you've got to do, you got to do it. And when we were financially not so good, um, we had some general obligation debt that was issued. There's a statutory limit. To I think 10% of the assessed value of the property, and I think there's about eight and a half million dollars that we could borrow with the general obligation, but I really don't want to do that in the event there's calamity. Okay. Because these are revenue bonds, and I need somebody to assist me with making sure they don't tap onto the general obligation. This is the VRA, the General Resource Authority, which is a quasi-governmental agency. Yep. Uh, that Ms. Long, I think, from the county. I'd like to get proposals for that. And um, if awarded, we also will need to get proposals on bond council. Yeah. Usually, see, kind of the council, the manager's requesting authorization to seek proposals. Mm -hmm. Common consent? Common consent? Proceed. Good deal. You have the right to proceed. Absolutely. On ongoing projects, dilapidated buildings, I know of one less. Well, <laughs> there's one less on Fifth Street. Uh, Tessie is working on, on Oak Street. She's got everything. I've confirmed with her. I dare say there'll be a court date established fairly soon I say nothing to report but the 30 days has expired on South Main Street that, that, that's, that's getting a little bit of uh, traction out there unfortunately on um, and I, I understand the report but the time has expired and there's been no work the chimney has fallen off the you wouldn't respond to anything I got a phone call from Robert how was that I mean um, what does this mean it means you gotta do something with your house I appreciate it. No work, no effort. Um, the grass is a little bit mangy as well, and so we'll be working on the grass. We can get that handled. But I think it's probably time to move on to step number two uh, with that property. I think it's 807 That's South right. Main Street. 
and uh, begin that process. I don't know if anybody's living on the property anymore. I'm not seeing vehicles there terribly often. Uh, so I don't know the status of right. But I do know the power's on because the lights were on in the house okay. earlier. So I'm asking authorization to move forward, including advertising an ordinance to uh, begin the process.